the minutes of the March 18th meeting. Gentlemen, have you had time to read it? If so, we'll entertain a motion to accept. I'll move it. Second, a motion by Dave, second, second. second by Paul. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Before we get into the public hearing, we have uh, Rich uh, Linsky here, who is the new fire chief of New York Mills. Rich, we want to stand up and say hi, and you have yes. some Good evening, uh, Rick Linsky. I took over as New York Mills fire chief January 1st. We just wanted to come out and introduce ourselves to the board. I have with me first assistant Ed Chamberlain. He's in charge of our EMS. And uh, Mike Edwards, our second assistant, was supposed to be here with us. Something must have happened at home, but he's in charge of our training division. And uh, we just want to introduce ourselves formally, come out and say hello. Uh, as many of you know, we uh, take care of a portion of the town of Hartford and the Consumer Square area and the orchards mm -hmm. and over in Washington Drive area and portions of French Road and Champlain Ave. So um, again, I just want to say hello so you can put a face with a name next time you, uh, you hear about me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, entertain any questions or comments you might have about our service to the residents of uh, Town of Hartford at this point. Well, we, we've always been pleased with the service from the New York Coast Fire Department. And, uh, Rick, I want to thank you for coming over and uh, introducing yourself and Deputy Chief. Board, do you have any uh, questions for the chief or deputy chief? <laughs> Many questions. <laughs> <laughs> that means you're doing a great yeah. job. So uh, uh, again, I appreciate you coming over. I'm sure you're combined, the, the three chiefs have about 80 years of fire service wow. experience. So we've been here a while, and uh, we're proud to now take over the leadership of our department. So we're going to do the best job we can. I'm sure you will. Thank, you, Thank you for your service. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, public hearing. We have a public hearing tonight with regards to local law introductory A of 2014. The, uh, it's a fishing ordinance with regards to Washington Mills Athletic Park. Uh, counselor, would you just go over this? Yeah, this is, this is a local law which would prohibit fishing at the Washington Mills Athletic Park from the Friday immediately preceding the first Saturday in June beginning on noon at that, on that Friday until 2 p.m. on the first Saturday in June. The only fishing that will be allowed during that period will be by people participating in the fishing derby, uh, which would be children under the age of 16 and whoever is there with them. They would be fishing from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on that Saturday. So other than that, there will be no fishing allowed. With regards to this uh, law or this legislation, anybody like to make a comment? The public hearing is now open. Dave? Yeah, I'll just make one comment that we are. Just be, for on behalf record, of Trout just Unlimited give and regional, as the regional vice president of the chapter, Trout Unlimited, we are very much in favor of the ordinance, obviously. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Dave. Anyone else that would like to make a, a comment? <coughs> If you just give your name, sir. Bill Wheatley, president of Squint Creek Fish and Game Club, and we are very much in favor of this. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, anyone else? No, there being no other comments, motion to close the public hearing, folks? Motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Right. Right. Gentlemen, would you like to act on this now or uh, wait? I'd like to make a motion we adapt local law uh, A. A second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay, moving on. Uh, town, <coughs> town Clerk Committee, uh, Councilman Woodman. We have a vacancy part time uh, clerk. Uh, <coughs> Rebecca. I'm being, I'm being, I'm being uh, salary of 1075 an hour, uh, request date uh, 47. I make the motion that we approve that. Second. Second. Uh, second. Third. Second by Jim. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. We have the zone map amendment uh, seeker responses. The zone map amendment for Corey. Uh, 
Are we looking to set the date for the public hearing well, at this we point? We haven't received the planning board yet. It's on the next planning board uh, meeting, which is next, next week. It's either next Monday or the Monday after that. I'm not sure, but it's coming up right away. Okay. I think it's next Monday. So possibly by the next meeting in April, we could set a date, possibly. Okay. All right. <clears throat> we have the inspector LLC wants to uh, do some inspections in the town of New Hartford. We're okay with uh, approving that, Joe. I, we really don't have any qualifications for these inspectors, so he's Someone entitled to inspect. Do we have anybody here from? Uh... Yes, sir. My name is Brian Sweet. I'm, I'm representing the inspector LLC tonight. Okay. Do you, can you just give us a just a brief uh, resume, if you will, of, of your business? We're not looking for anything long, but just uh, the nature of uh, the people that work for you, if they're licensed, not licensed, etc. Um, yeah, all the inspectors, I, I believe my office forwarded copies of, uh, of uh, liability insurance and everything that we have here. We have, um, in this area, we have, I believe, two inspectors that would cover this area. Um, myself being one, uh, the other person being uh, Dave Wheatley, who is from the closer to Syracuse area. Uh, we are all certified IAEI. Um, everyone in our company is certified. Um, we are also certified in Utica. Uh, most all municipalities we are certified in. Good. 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 I'd have to review. It looks like we may have to do an amendment then to our local law and have a public hearing. So I should be ready with that for the next meeting. Okay. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And then we have the May 1st uh, Medical County Association in town meeting. Uh, it's in Oneida. Uh, requesting for permission for town officials to attend. Okay, Rick wants to go Rick Sherman. Rick and Darlene, did you still want to attend that? I'm sorry? Did you still want to attend that, uh, the United County uh, Association Towns Dinner sure. that was changed to May 1st? May 1st. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Who else? Board, anybody here? No? So it's just Rick and Darlene? I'll make the motion to approve that. Second. Second by Paul. All in favor? Oh, aye. 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 Unanimous. Uh, okay. We have a couple of things here. First, let me get the easy one out. There's a uh, Police Chief Association um, conference in July. Um, just <coughs> uh, It's in the budget for Mike to go and just... Uh, I don't know, maybe an actual motion, but it sounds just to say it's okay for him to go. Yes. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. We're all set, Mike. All right. Then we have also, we are down one part-time animal control officer. And I know some time ago we did put out <coughs> an ad for on the website, etc. And we did get some applications in reviewed by uh, the chief, the uh, most qualified, I guess, and the one recommended by the police chief is uh, Jeff Madden. Um, did you want to say something? Jeff well, I got a requisition form just in case you need it for, <laughs> for the appointment of Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got one? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think most of you people know Jeff. Uh, he was here uh, with our central dispatch. He's familiar with the um, uh, with the police department. Uh, very familiar with the town, the roads, etc. Obviously, in the central dispatch, he just seems to be a good fit. So, um, I'll make the motion to hire Jeff Madden as a part-time animal control officer at the rate of thirteen dollars and forty-five cents, effective April tenth, two thousand and fourteen. Second. Second. All in favor? I I'll abstain. Okay. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. Um. Was there anything else, Mike, that we talked about? <coughs> no, that's it for me. No cars. Was there a car we wanted to do with? 
Maybe we'll send it. No, we're, we're all set with those. Okay, moving on. Um, Jim Messick, Public Works. So you have the MS4 report uh, completed to be signed by you? Yep. Everybody here, Jim, are you, you may not be here. Are you familiar with, with what this document does? Well, we, Rick and I reviewed it a little bit uh, okay. in detail, so where it covers and so forth. Rick, you got any comments on this? Yeah, I can. I just highlighted some a few things if you want me to. Go ahead. Okay. In the report, it's an annual report yearly. Uh, it's done by Joanne Humphreys, water quality specialist of Anand County. She puts it together for us. Um, in the report, it's uh, on the representative. Uh, local stormwater public contact for any stormwater issues is, is, is me. Uh, stormwater management program coordinator is superintendent of highways. Um, a little bit, uh, Herkimer and Hattie County planning, the outreach to residents, um, the web applications and local law developments and training. Uh, they go out on uh, public education outreach construction sites. There was 158 con contractors trained, which they have to go to this training to, to get. Uh, some, a lot of these contractors are people who don't work, do work in Hartford. So the contractors get, um, get trained. Uh, we go out and we, we inspect the vehicle car washes, the car washes that are in our town, to be sure that they're operating correctly and what's going into the stormwater. Um, <clears throat> Uh, let's see, we, we print uh, materials occasionally. Uh, there's some up in the town offices. I have some at the Hobby Garage and on our webpage. Um, public uh, meetings with landowners and residents <coughs> to address stormwater related concerns. We had about 100 attendees between, uh, we had a meeting out there on Grange Hill and we had some issues. Beachwood Road, uh, Wills Drive, Woodbury, <coughs> and Marlboro Lane. Those were our areas that we kind of concentrated and we had our meetings with our residents. Uh, completion of the Beachwood of Stormwater Management Project, it's, it's completed. Uh, we had an annual cleanup of the Sequoia Creek in April 2013. That's a yearly thing where they walk the creek bed and any debris, whatever is picked. Um, public access, uh, again, the copy of the annual report will be a, a copy here at Town Hall. <laughs> Town website, I'll have uh, Carol put it on the website and also there will be a copy at the Highway Garage. Anybody can take a look at that report. We continue to work with residents and landowners, contractors, address ongoing stormwater management issues. And our major projects submitted under the Hazardous Mitigation Grants Program where stormwater retrofit practices will be highlighted. Um, Sequoia Creek Basin is one, and uh, <coughs> the Hazardous Mitigation Grants, uh, we're looking at that Mud Creek project. And the report will be posted for 365 days. Jim, was that a motion to don't go in? Yep. Was that a motion? Yes, a motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay, Rick, you want to go over, or Jim, you want to start with the, the cameras? Yeah, what, Rick and I um, discussed and put some cameras at the Sanger building. I think it's a much needed um, uh, thing to do down there. We got a lot of equipment there. It's, it needs to be uh, monitored monitor and um, visible. So Rick, we looked at uh, obtaining three three quotes, actually probably got more than that, but um, we narrowed down to to one company, um, and it is Tass Electronics in Yorkville. Um, and uh, they were used, uh, they were used in other... Uh, uh, Tom Whitestown yep. uh, has used them uh, with great results. Yeah, I, I viewed the one in the Tom Whitestown, and it's... Great. Seriously, it's, it's colored. It's not black and white. It comes in very clear. At um, night, when the lights are out, the cameras are still picking up. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, 16 cameras and you know, monitor for 32-inch uh, monitor and so forth. I mean, smoke detector. There's a lot to this. It's a really robust, uh, you know, process here. The cost is $9,995. Um, covers a one-year warranty. Uh, Parts, labor, uh, three year warranty on the DVR. So I, I like to make a motion that we uh, approve this. 
So get this, uh, get this Second. monitor. Second. Second. Discussion? Um, just a question. Can you monitor from your phone? Yes, you can. Oh, okay. Yeah, supervisor, I've had that capability. Any, anybody who wants to have that can uh, you monitor from the phone. Okay. Anything else? All in, no more further discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous? Unanimous? Okay. Who wants to do it? Jim? Go ahead. Yeah, uh, got some upgrade of equipment. Uh, Rick and I... Oh, yeah, one thing oh, with the same. Oh, before? Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, at one point, we talked about sewers as pump stations that security on and not those with the alarm systems. Right now, if a PD happens to be patrolling the area and sees a little red light flashing on top of the pump station, he'll give, it, give me a call. Or if a resident in the area sees that light, they'll give me a call. If there's something going on with that pump station, I have no way of knowing it unless one of those call. This system, we talked to a general security. There's seven pump stations in the town. And this is a monitoring system that would, would call myself or Chris Moran and um, to hook it up it's 875 per station to get it going get get them on to all seven stations and then after that it's a monthly monitoring uh, fee of $15 a month per station per station and yes how many stations Eight? seven 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 does that include the Wi-Fi though or do they take care of that too uh, I mean, how would you get how would you get the signal from is it, is it Wireless communication, yes. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, so it's cell <coughs> yeah. Oh, it's included yeah. in there. Okay. Yeah. This company said they're, they're familiar with yeah. sewers uh, and so forth. Well, we've certainly, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we've had problems with the station going down. We have. Not being aware of it in a timely fashion and a, a, a real right. issue resulted. Mm -hmm. Yes. And every time I have that issue, then I have to do the proper procedures and notifications right yeah Dave's right we did within the last few years we've had that situation we had it at Applewood I know at least right. once if not yeah. twice oh. and some of the other places yeah. okay. I think it's a good idea you need a motion or what are we doing I just have one more quick question for you um, with this system here is there is there a way that it actually um, communicates with you to tell you if like the cell coverage goes down though because I know like ADT has a, a system that you got a you know you got a cellular part to it and then also on the phone line. So if the phone line goes down, cell picks up. Sometimes the cell will go down also. Like how like say we have a real big storm and we lose cell coverage, how is it going to monitor you? That's I mean is there a backup for that or I mean are you hardwired and also? I mean that's just something you might want to ask them because okay. when we have bad storms, I know like where I live, like. You know, you'll, you'll lose like cell coverage, and you know the phone line might go down also. So, you know, just something to look into. But I think it's a great idea for what it is. Hey, do you have a motion on this? You want to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion too. To move forward on this. Okay. Second. Okay. Second by Paul. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Jim. Yep. And again, the next uh, list uh, or agenda item is uh, upgrade of equipment. Um, as I started to say, Rick and I have been talking about this for a while. Um, I think he's got a great plan in place in terms of um, upgrading the, the, his equipment. Uh, and it really makes sense. Uh, I'll let Rick explain it because he really has a good handle on this. Uh, in terms of, so the you know the town's not losing money, um, and it just makes sense because we have equity in these vehicles, and um, you know so uh, I think it's every two years we're looking to do this if we can. Uh, it just really makes sense. In terms of just upgrading, we don't worry about um, equipment nickel and diamond us after the warranty and so forth. So um, he's got a couple couple pieces of his truck. Uh, he has a 2012 uh, Ford 350. Looking to move that up to a uh, 2014, and then it's got a Bobcat. Uh, so if you want to just go over the, little, the yeah. logistics of the numbers, so <coughs> these guys have an understanding. These are we put on auctions in national that we use to get rid of all our <coughs> surplus vehicles. Um, I've been watching it. The 2012 vehicle should uh, pay for itself for the new one and maybe even uh, bring some extra in. Um, bad guy is four years old. Doesn't it? It's got you know a few hours on, quite a few hours on it. I just upgrade that while we can, uh, while it's still worth some money. And um, I do have uh, some money in the budget on the sewer side of it because the bad guy does go on sewer projects. 
And um, so between the Bobcat, what it's worth, and, and that money's in the budget, um, it should um, get re you know be able to replace it. If not, then we, we back off and, and we keep it. So it shouldn't cost us anything. I think Rick has done a, uh, not just those vehicles, but I think he's looked at the heavier stuff also and, and has done some projections on how we can save money and maintain a, a, a proper fleet and not get stuck with some huge repair bills, a decaying fleet, if you will. And this just goes along with it. Right. Yeah, I mean, just the way you, you purchase these things, you, you purchase them right. Yeah. So, and you know, if like somebody else went out and bought, bought them, it would be a lot higher than what you're you're paying for them. Mm -hmm. So it gives us a lot of leeway there. Mm -hmm. right. uh, so it just, it just, it just, I think honestly, it just makes a lot of sense. Um, just have... Is there a motion? Yeah, there's a motion. Second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 One thing on here, Pat, I didn't, I didn't get time to run the agenda. Just real quickly, uh, Rick and I have been working on uh, a new trash and brush uh, uh, list here. Last year we had it mailed. Uh, this year Rick negotiated with the town crier to um, have it put in, uh, inserted into the town crier, and he also negotiated to put it stick around there to draw attention. You probably didn't see it because you're in the you're in the village, but uh, well I pay town taxes. I got you got one. Wait, did you get the sticker? <laughs> you did? Okay. I thought some people didn't get it. But so this is the supervisor lives in the village. I know, but I didn't get one. I got I got one, I got one without the sticker and without right. the answer. So but this is a new design from, from last year. It was just supposed to be outside the village. So this is this is last year's uh, and this is what this year and the big issue is that a lot of residents aren't abiding by the the dates and they're putting them out after the you know, cleaners come by and so forth so um, we talked about you know this is, you know it's perforated so they can stick it on the refrigerator and keeping it more um, more manageable than a kind of keep a whole cumbersome uh, sheet here so that's a new design something we worked on in the short term so but uh, again, I commend Rick on um, getting this together, put together in the short term, and a nice new design. So, a, a couple of years ago, that, that same program that we did ran us around four thousand dollars. This yeah. year, we were able to do it for about fourteen and about almost fifteen hundred dollars, just slightly under. That's good. And I got I got some extras coming. They'll also be on our website, and I got extras coming to put in, in, in town hall up there on the desk there. And I will have some extras at the highway crash. Yeah. Good job. Good job, James. Great. Thank you. Good job. Looks nice. Thank you. Also, um, you might have heard about the $40 million that the governor has given uh, for pothole repair, one time thing. Uh, what are you going to do with that money? <laughs> We're going to fill potholes. <laughs> What's intended for? Uh, just to let you know, the New Hartford share uh, came in yesterday afternoon. It's $18,537.73. Okay. So we'll. Got a few extra bucks. Good. Good. Okay. Thanks, Rick. Thanks, Rick. Okay, moving on. Uh, Councilman Reynolds, senior citizen. Right. Had a donation from Capital District's physicians for $1,650 mm -hmm. uh, to the senior citizens. I want to increase <laughs> contractual A6772.4 to $1,650 and increase A2705.1 for $1,650. I'll make a motion that we do that. Second? Second. Who, who seconded that? I did. Jim? Jim. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Unanimous. We've got uh, seasonal appointments. It's in your packet. They're all uh, town residents. It's budgeted. <coughs> Again, these are seasonal appointments in the parks department. I would ask for a motion to ex I will make a motion that we accept that first. Second. Well, we'll a second. Gentlemen, any discussion? Have you looked it over? You said these are all repeat? Uh, I'm not sure that they're all repeats, but they're all uh, uh, town residents. It's all the, all the two all the two are repeats, and I'll have I still have some more playground. <laughs> Uh, attendance and one park labor position. Okay, 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. We also have in your packet a uh, policy statement relative to uh, tobacco-free policy in the parks. Uh, this is something that uh, has been brought up before, and uh, Mike has done a lot of research on it and has found a, uh, a reasonable approach to this, something that uh, uh, kind of makes sense, and I'll let Rick or I mean uh, Mike explain that if you want to Mike these are there are signs in your packet that are going to be posted yeah we're working with uh, uh, bridges to prevent tobacco they've been at me for a while to do something in the parks and in the past year I did some evaluating of where we do have problems and to me the playgrounds is a good place to start um, we had some you know, we've had some complaints about people that smoke right in, you know, right out on the playground property. So I'd, I'd like to start there. I think it's, personally, I think it's a no-brainer. Um, this company will provide the signs and everything for us for free, so there's no cost. And I had her review it. I don't think we had any problems with it from a policy. Do you have yeah. Yeah. Motion. Motion by Dave. Second. Second by Paul. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye unanimous. Just a quick question, Mike. You said this is just a start. Where, where other areas are you, are you looking at? Well, the playgrounds to me is a good place to start. We'll see how it takes hold. And other ones around my mind might be the athletic park, you know, specifically to baseball fields and sure. churches. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, okay. yeah absolutely. Okay. To, uh, we've had uh, typical, I think, uh, vandalism issues and, and uh, some of the things that you might expect in a, in a park area. And to uh, alleviate that and to mitigate some of it, the town put lighting in and done some other things in all the parks to uh, kind of control that. And this is kind of the next step at the Parks and uh, Parks Committee meeting. It was discussed to uh, perhaps provide some security in the parks. And uh, to that end, there was a, a request for proposals put out. Uh, two came back. Mike has a recommendation. And again, in your package, you'll see uh, exactly what that entails, right down to the types of uniforms that they'll be wearing. Mike, you want to? Yeah, uh, of the board, uh, when we were through the budget process, we added $9,000 to the parks contractual to be used in some way, shape, or form for parks security. Um, I've been you know, reviewing different opportunities with uh, Chief, and <coughs> we put forth an R uh, RFP to four uh, one company in Syracuse and three basically locally. We received two responses. We're essentially looking to get an increase in se a security presence between Memorial Day and Labor Day. Uh, we've identified Wednesday through Friday from three to eight is a, uh, you know, for various reasons, is a very busy time in our parks and weekends from noon until eight uh, because of extensive pavilion rentals and other activities that are going on. So. Trying to look at it from an eye of you know not wasting a whole lot of hours during slow periods, but uh, pinpointing where we really need the help. Uh, my belief is, quite uh, professionally, it's too much for our laborers now. As time is is, is uh, you know, uh, as time has just marched on, and the, the, the days of having a, a laborer as your security guard have passed us, and it's uh, you know with all the responsibilities that the police department has to handle. Um, there's not always a, a guarantee that I'm going to have a presence there either. Um, so this, in my estimation, is a, a great way to put a professional-looking set of eyes, uh, some enforcement principles in their hands that hopefully will lessen calls on our police department and at the same time uh, get a presence from our police department there quite quickly when that's necessary also. So, and this um, is, uh, well, we're 30 hours a week? Is that 31 right? hours a week total. Yep, for Recommendation by the PD? Yeah, I was in, uh, uh, I've had many talks with Mike, and I'm on page with him with a, with a company that he wants to go with. So I, I think the hours that uh, they're working are the hours that we're seeing the most type of complaints in our parks, and it will also <coughs> free up my cars and sometimes save me overtime uh, that I've been spending before the police car in a park during some of these uh, uh, higher incident time frames. Questions? Rich, board? Yes. Questions for Mike or Mike? Either Mike? I have a question for Mike. I mean, I mean, if there if problems arise, I mean, can these guys handle the situation? I mean, I mean, yeah. putting an unarmed guy out, and I mean, 
I mean, they're, they're in numerous businesses all the time. You know, right, right, right. Uh, throughout not only our township, the county, and other counties. Uh, they're professionally trained, though they know how to handle incidents. Um, I did speak with Mike, who spoke with uh, the companies and told them what we expect their security officers to do. Basically, we don't want them making stops, detaining people. Use their eyes and ears, report the incident to a 911 and we'll respond to this car. <coughs> And there, there's an enforcement presence there too. Of you know, they'll have a uh, retired police vehicle uh, be marked park security. They will have a, a handheld radio. They will be professionally outfitted. Um, so they, their first their first pass is going to be to identify the problem and then try to rectify the problem with proper warnings and enforcement, but not to the point of physical or detaining. Uh, when, if they can't get compliance at that point, then they would uh, back off, so to speak, and look for some support from the police department. I think the visibility of a security boost does a lot right off the bat, because now they've got somebody, whether that person is going to do anything, at least they have the capability to get a hold of our police department. So just having somebody there that's visible, I think, stops a lot of mm -hmm. potential problems that could occur. And I think it's important that we enter into some sort of an understanding in writing with them as to what they're supposed to do and not supposed to do to protect us from liability in the instance they overstep their bounds. Yeah, we had, uh, Pat and I had met and we thought yeah. uh, a meeting with yourself, yeah. the company we hire, and Mike would be prudent for those right. reasons. Yeah. I, I also, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, both companies that we're, that bid are very reputable. Uh, they're, you know, Mike and I both took a look at some of the references, but the, in some cases, they're handling entire campus, you know, college security, the Utica College, whatever. So they're they're handling some pretty big kind of projects, Remington Arms, places like that. So I, I mean, is, is there a big cost savings in having our own police department here? Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. well, it looks like the numbers here. I mean, you're talking. Well, again, they're 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 responsible for all liability insurance. They're responsible for health insurance. It's the whole package. They're responsible for training, for uniforms. So. The dollar figure you're seeing there is our entire costs, or any other hidden costs. So, so like, what's the difference? Like, if we had an officer, say down there, what what would be that, that? per hour rate is about half of ours without the bounties done. Okay. I, I was going. My my guess would be fifty percent savings without the benefits. So the vehicle that we're looking to mark up, you know, does that stay on the premise? It's going to stay. We're going to we'll. Uh, Actually, what I'm thinking of doing is I have a very small office space in the administrative building. I'd like to keep them separate from the shop and all the offices. So they'll come in, uh, the facility, be, the office will be open for them. The car will be present, already gassed up. I don't anticipate them ever gassing anything up or moving around many of our uh, office facilities or maintenance facilities. Um, so gassed up, they'll check in. The radio will be in their car ready to go. Uh, we'll provide them with a, with a uh, handheld radio. And the vehicle is one of the, it's actually one of the cruisers that was going to be retired, but I went down and was able to have my, I picked what I thought was the best one. I think you, I think you picked pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I don't know if this was your question, Jim, but that, that will stay in the parks. It's right. not mm -hmm. going to be used. They're not going to take it back to their place of employment. It'll always stay at a time. Uh, yeah, right. that. Yeah. It, it's it's I, to be locked and secured at the park right. and used only for their rounds. So they'll have a set round between all three parks. As far as liability and the event, something they back into something, you know, with our vehicle or something. They're responsible for that as far as under their insurance policy. Well, it turned, or, well, well our insurance is going to be our vehicle. We could probably insurance. get some kind of. I'm just indemnification agreement right, from yeah. that. Yeah, I'm just I'm just worried, you know, God forbid to hit somebody or something. I mean whereas that's an excellent question. Yeah. I mean yeah. that's it's we'll deal with that through the insurance clause and the agreement with them. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't that's a I guess that's, that's one question. That's we'll have to I, deal I, with that. Yeah. 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 Okay. And I just have one more question. My my biggest concern is this. how did how did they how are these guys gonna handle a severe situation? I, I mean what 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 they're going to call the police to them. Well, for, if it's a medical situation, they, they're all going to be trained in CPR. And so they're well, I don't think that's no, I'm not, look, I'm not looking at that. Oh, so just, had, there's so many problems around today. Right. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, that, that I mean if somebody has a weapon, just for say, I mean, how do these guys, I mean... Well, they're trained to handle those situations now, and, and basically mm -hmm. they're eyes and nerves. They back off, you know. And, and you're going to clarify all those things with them when you sit down. We plan to sit down and 
have a uh, face to face with the company once this uh, we know this contract is going through so that we can come up with the guidelines that we expect their company to adhere to. We had similar situations with our staff where you you go and you approach and whether it be a alcohol situation or somebody maybe a, a drug issue, mm -hmm. uh, a domestic dispute, they're going to be approaching the situation and looking for a verbal solution. If they can't get it, can't get compliance, they're going to be pulling back and then making the proper communications to take it to the next step. But again, I think with this type of visibility, the mark car, the officer, the like fat side, it's, it is a deterrent. Um, and I'm sure people are going to test the waters. I mean, just to sure. put, you know, word of mouth's going to get out and say, you know what, can't get away with X. So, um, I also think from a public standpoint, I think we're doing, we're going an extra step here to protect the, the patrons of our park. So I think it's very important. No, I agree with that. I just, you know, myself personally, if you've seen an officer there, you know, that's can take care of a situation. I just feel, you know, more safe in the park. That's why I was looking at the numbers to say, well, if you had an officer there and a, and a, and a big situation did arise, because I think that's what we're trying to protect, that at least a situation can get be taken care of. Because today, I know, things aren't. You know, I tell you this quite honestly: if I could have, if I could be provided with an officer and a police car right, right. to do exactly what I'm asking for here, then at this cost, you're absolutely right. That, that's I mean, what I, would, I would prefer that, but I just don't think that's the reality of okay. our budgets. And this won't diminish the patrol cars from getting into the parks at all. Just and we couldn't put you. on, like, say there was a retired officer just for say it was trained or whatever, we couldn't put them on because of union probably, right, that um, we put, them, in there put them on the parks department or something to make them, you know, an official officer, but for the parks department, I mean, we couldn't do anything like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I don't foresee that. Nothing anything. like that. Okay. It helps oh. that the company we're recommending is they're all retired police officers. So essentially, that's you're hiring <laughs> okay. the core of retired, not necessarily in the Hartford police officers, but they're Right, right, no, I officers. just, yeah. yeah. And they're assuming all the and they're assuming all the liability. So, well, real, we're, we're taking off the we're, we're taking the initial burden of, of the Eisenhers from the parks employees. They have other duties, and we're giving it to the security company to now be the Eisenhers, uh, which frees up Mike's guys to do what they're supposed to do, mm -hmm. maintenance of the parks and, and so forth. Um, I think it's a good plan, and I think it'll work well and benefit everybody. Yeah, and okay. we're you know we're committed to you know. A, one year trial here, and we can we can yeah. sit down and evaluate it and see what we got. See if it's something we want to try again. Okay. And this is not unusual. You know, the state had its own park security at one time years ago. The city of Utica had its own park security, all separate from state police, all separate from the, the Utica PD down there. So, you know, this is just following in that same category. It, this is basically a trend in parks, it's just like no different than splash pads and. The trend in public parks right now is towns, municipalities, and cities are turning more to a professional presence similar to a college campus security. Very simple. So we budget 9000 but we have, a, we have a slight shortfall. Yeah, and I, uh, I believe I can take care of that between my parks and playgrounds. Mm -hmm. I can button up the 2400 I mean. Okay. I say that now. We're going to the record. <laughs> Make a motion to accept the proposal for LMB security oh, at eleven thousand four hundred and thirty-two dollars. Second. No second. Sir. Second by Jim. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Mike. Yep. In the next four weeks. <laughs> yeah. Would you get a hold of get with Dan sometime after the fifteenth of April and work out where that twenty-four hundred dollars is going to come from? Sure. Okay. Mike, one, one other thing. With the winter we had, I'd just like to compliment you on the sidewalk job you did on Seneca Turnpike. I'd like to take their praise, but I didn't move one piece of snow on those sidewalks. <laughs> well, who did? All my staff. Well, you know. I, I know you didn't do it, but it was a good job and it was a difficult job. It was difficult, more and, difficult this year than I ever And had. there's a lot of people that walk on Seneca Turnpike. And if the sidewalk isn't clear, they're in the road and it creates hazard. And you did a good job. Thank you very much. Yep. Anything else? No. Thanks, Mike. Okay, moving on. Uh, Dave, you got uh, Woodbury Road drainage. Yeah, I just wanted to mention uh, we had made a statement that we would do some work up there uh, during the winter when the ground froze. That didn't happen for a lot of good reasons. But the point is, if we don't 
do some action up there very quickly. And I know we're trying to get easements, but I would just point out that if we get a good rainstorm, uh, the work that the town has put in, a portion of that work, is going to be lost. Uh, it's already suffering. And also the, uh, the homeowners up there, they really haven't been sitting on their hands. They've put a lot of sweat equity, money, and uh, blood, sweat, and tears into uh, protecting their property over and above what the town has done. And uh, I would just point that out that if we get another storm this, this season, we're going to continue to lose a lot of the work that's already been done up there. So I just wanted to point that out. I know we're working on easements. It's not easy. but. Uh, it's got to be done and done as soon as possible. There was some confusion. Okay. Okay. Um, I thought, and I think Rick thought, that there was going to be uh, ease in getting the easements, if you will. Okay. That did not come about. Uh, upon finding this out, I talked with Rick, and uh, I've got. Yeah, Rick gave me tonight the list of, uh, of all the property owners. Right. Along so her tax time, map, so we can I understand the issue, but we're we're, we're, no, we're losing some of, of our our investment already, right. and that's not right. a good thing. Herb's on top of it; he'll get the easements. Uh, John Spinella was ready to go the second week in January, so um, okay. as soon as easements come, we'll move on. Yeah. Just one site. I did get three quotes today, uh, like we did in the past. Oh yeah. And and we're. Uh, they're from uh, John Spinell, Al Roberts, and LMP Trucking out of Rome. And they're all right there at $135 an hour with an excavator or with an operator. This gentleman, Jim, and I don't know if you're familiar with this, but what we did a year ago or a year and a half ago was to go out and get bids to handle some of these smaller jobs. At the time, John Spinell came in at the low bid. We hired him. Uh, it's worked out well. Um, I think he did a great job. He worked, um, I mean, if you go up and you see the ponds, you've seen the ponds, he did a great job up there. Plus, he works well with our highway department, with Rick and with our guys. Um, they work as a team. Um, and I asked Rick to go out and get bids again so we could have the same type of situation. So instead of having to go out and bid all these little jobs, we've already got somebody, we've gotten the bids. Uh, now we just find a job and go out and direct whoever we want to appoint here to get it done. So, and that's why uh, Rick came up with these bits. So, all the same? They're all the same. I've got enough work. I, I put John up there on Woodbury, uh, and then Jordan Road Project. We've got some other ones up that way. I've got a couple smaller ditches that got to be cleaned, uh, Fawncrest, those areas that I can uh, utilize one of the other ones. So. Well, you want to, you want to make a motion that yeah, we, yeah. we what do you want to say? Approve all three? Approve all three because they're, right, and then, they're so available the when I need that. Lots of times I'll get a sewer job. That's i, I got to have them immediately. Right. And LMP will come immediately when the other ones might be tied up. Right, so I just have a quick question. For, is yeah. that going to take care of that St. Thomas problem on the front crest if we do that? Uh, we're looking at the same. Yeah, that yeah. One's on one side and one's mm -hmm. on the other side. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yep. So since they're all the same price, I, I think mm -hmm. it's easy to, to approve all three of them. Yep. Make a motion to do that. Second. Second by Paul. Motion by Dave. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Where Aye. do we stand on the easements? I'm sorry. Where do we stand on the easements? Can you just give me a. You've got a list. Rick, Rick you just let them know? gave me. Those three people, you let them know. Uh, yes, yes. Rick tonight handed me a copy of the tax map okay. with names of owners. Okay. Uh, this is the first time I've been involved, okay. as I explained to you earlier with any issue relating to Hoffman Road okay. um, easements, but uh, certainly I'll be happy to take a look at this and see if I can map them out from the tax map in some general description. Can you give us an estimate? Right now? 30 days. Okay, all right, thank you. I also, I know I'll meet with Pat on, uh, on an issue that I need to talk to you about up there, and whenever you're, okay. okay. Um, Ray Hill Trail. Who's Ray Hiltree? That's executive session relating to oh, acquisition okay. of real property. And if I could stay for that, I can just oh, All right. Um, board, before we move on to uh, the finance and my section, anything else? No? Okay. Dan? Uh, I just have one 
quick request for a, a minor amendment or change to our procurement policy with regards to petty cash. Uh, the current policy in the, the police department's petty cash is comprised of also the town justice, the dispatch center, the animal control. We would just like to segregate out the town justice to have its own petty cash or cash drawer for ease of you know, making the change and whatnot when fines are paid, rather than being having to go over the police department and how much? Like Hundred and fifty dollars. Is that enough? Yeah. We're not finding that. What's that? We're not finding. <laughs> yeah. All right. Motion to approve a petty cash fund of one hundred and fifty dollars for the motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, did you have something, Joe? Yeah. Uh, Pat, are you going to announce the uh, public hearing? Oh, for the uh, for the zone uh, for the uh, zone map and, 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 and uh, the telecommunications. Uh, oh, that you're on, right? Yeah. Yeah. Were we going to include that in the? I thought we just talked about that earlier about including it as a chapter within the zoning. No, the telecommunications <coughs> chapter. Okay, all right. We want to amend our telecommunications law as it relates to co-location on existing towers in commercial districts. When we revised it, we uh, amended it such that if they're co-locating in a commercial business area, they have to come in and go through the whole process of a site plan approval. Um, I believe it was the intent at that time merely to amend as to residential uh, because that was a concern of people tacking these on residential towers um, and we would like to see if the board would consider amending our uh, telecommunications law uh, by providing that if it's co-located on a commercial, uh, on a structure in a commercial district, it does not have to go back, it would just go to Joe for a simple approval. Do you have that? I don't have it with me now, no. So we can't schedule it? No, but uh, I, I need the board to tell me that they're okay with it so that I can go ahead and draft it. Yeah, I reviewed it with Joe. I'm, I'm okay with it. Okay. Dave? Yes. Yes. Okay. We'll get that. Now with regards to public hearing. We, we have enough time between now and, this, and the next meeting for a public hearing on the zoning? How much time do we need? Well, it needs to be the local law needs to be in its final format. Well, you, and we've got all that, right? The, the, the comprehensive plan and, and... I don't have anything. Oh, you yeah. didn't give it to Gip? It's all done. It's on the website, right? I give it to Carol. I don't know. Do we have to do Seeker on that, too? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, see, yeah. Seeker hasn't been done on it unless River Street did. No. Did mm -hmm. they? Uh, okay, so give me a date. Probably be well if you do seeker, you've got to allow 30 days for the response for the agencies to respond to us. And once that's done, um, the newspaper publication needs to be made at least 10 days in advance of the hearing. Does that include the 30 days? That 10 days? You could possibly run it that way. Yeah, good. So in other words, what, what's the next, what's the first meeting in May? Would they give us 30 days? Seventh or eighth? That would give us 30 days. Fifth or twelfth. Shoot. I don't know how to get this done. Um, so the second meeting in May? Fourteenth is the... <laughs> is the first one? Mm -hmm. Oh, well that will, that'll give us that work. Mm -hmm. Okay. So can someone get me... Yeah, I'll call Carol. Carol's got it because she put it on the website. But I'll, I'll and uh, Monica forward the the, uh, was it the seeker the long form EAF. And I there were there were a couple changes that I wanted on there. I called her today and I didn't hear back from her. But there were minor changes, Joe. <clears throat> yeah, I'll call and Joe. Just would you also call Carol in case I get tied up? And just tell her to forward that stuff to Gail tomorrow? I can do it. Okay. okay. So you'll do it? All yes. Right. Is it okay? Then we'll do it May 14th. Is okay? Um, motion to set a public hearing for the comprehensive plan and zoning. For motion by Paul. <coughs> second? Well, second. 
Second by Rich. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So we'll have it May 14th. Um, is that it, sir? That's good. Thank you. Okay. And yeah, that gives us actually a little bit more time. Um, okay. Where are you? Oh, over here? <laughs> did, you, did you look at them? Everybody looked at them? Oh, no. Okay, motion to approve. So moved. Second. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay, we have a couple of issues. Uh, Herb's got an executive session with regards to litigation for the Kessler and Shanko matters. Uh, matters. Uh, also, just an update on union negotiations <coughs> that I've got for you. Um, and acquisition of real estate. And acquisition of the real estate. Right. So, motion to go into executive session? Take the motion. Second. Second by you, Jim. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we'll take a couple minutes to clear out. Okay, we're back in, in uh, open session. Um, we have a couple of items that, that the board wants to review in open session. Rich? I make a motion that we obtain a special counsel for the Kessler case. Um, at a cost uh, not to exceed two hundred dollars per hour. Okay. Motion by Rich. Second. 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 Dave. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Uh, Paul, did you have something? Yes. To to um, I'd like to make a motion to approve the purchase of one acre of land adjacent to the McCrave property, as shown on the map. Um, no, I see sale. I'm sorry, sale. Um, by Delta and to purchase an adjacent one acre of land um, that's also shown by Delta on the map um, from a great property. For the same price. For same, the same price. price yeah. Motion by Paul, second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Anything else, Councilor? That's it. That was it. Anything else? Jim? If not, motion for agreement? Motion. Second. Second by Jim. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you.